Good afternoon folks, advanced higher chemistry again, this time specialising in this particular type of calculation and analysis method, gravimetric. Clues in the name to do with gravity, in other words this is about weighing stuff. Now the SQA want you to know a few uh, ways to, a few technical aspects of this, let's have a quick look at what they're expecting you to know. Um, they're expecting you to know how to weigh something, obviously. They're expecting you to do weigh by difference. Now, that's a slightly weird thing that nobody does in the real world, as far as I'm aware. Any real chemists out there watching this, unlikely as that is, feel free to stick a comment prove me wrong. But what they're suggesting is that you have uh, the bottle of the chemical sitting on a set of scales like this. And you've got your beaker here that you want to put the chemical into. Uh, and what they're suggesting is you transfer out chemical from here into there until this number has dropped down by the precise amount that you want. I'm not going to go into why that's not a great way in the real life, but that's okay. That That's called weighing by difference, basically. They also want you to know weigh accurately approximately. So <laughs> that doesn't mean that I've lost my few remaining marbles. If they say weigh accurately approximately one gram, that means something like, you know, from 0.85 uh, say up to 1.1-ish grams, but uh, whatever, whatever you end up weighing, you have to know precisely what it is. So therefore, say 1.076 grams would be approximately exactly one gram. Uh, they also want you to know the term heating to a constant mass. Now, this is for a gravimetric analysis method where you're blasting off water from something. In other words, you've got yourself your little crucible, um, with, uh, say, uh, bath salts, for example, uh, which are mostly water. Go and watch the Nile Red video on it. Very interesting. Uh, what you do is you weigh the bath salts first, um, and then the weight will be X. Uh, then you pop it over a Bunsen burner um, and blast it for, say, five minutes, with a lid on it, by the way. They want the lid on. Maybe you could pause the video and try and work out why. That seems very, very counterintuitive. The water vapour, trust me, that's not a gas-type fit. The water vapour will get out. But what they don't want to get out is tiny wee chunks of the thing you're heating up. So in theory, you're always supposed to heat and cool with the lid on. Um, so I, I did say cooling there. You can't simply kill the bunsen and leave it to cool down on the bench because it will soak all the water back in again that you've just blasted out. So you need to pop it into your desiccator. Um, so there's your... What's that meant to be? That's meant to be the crucible, sorry. Pop your desiccator into the crucible to cool and then put it back in the scales again and you'll now find it's less than X. You've dropped down by a certain number of grams. Pop it back on the heater again, blast it for another five minutes, cool on the desk heater, pop it back on the scales again. Keep going until your mass ends up, of course, pretty much flat like that. So that's mass against time, effectively. Um, and that's weighing to a constant mass. Once you've reached that point, excellent, you've dried it all out and you can be going on with the calculations. Um, what else do the SQ want you to know about it? Uh, Gravimetric is used to determine the mass of an element or a compound substance. Basically, what you're doing, you've got an option of basically two, two ways to do gravimetric. You can uh, do it this way, which is basically heating something to drive something off. Um, so that's called volatilization. That's a good word. Um, can I spell that? Good question. Volatilization. I think I can. Uh, uh, so that's, as I said, blasting something until... Blasting something with a Bunsen burner until you remove, usually, water from it. There is option number two, which is precipitation. Um, that friend of mine up the road here, uh, Dave, has got a fish tank, uh, which is probably more valuable than my car. Uh, at least it was at one point when it had loads of fancy coral in it. And the way he measured the sodium chloride content was actually a, a sort of variant on precipitation. He would add, he would take a tiny sample of the fish tank out, he would add a chemical to it, which precipitated this, the chloride ions as silver chloride. Um, so precipitation, I think that's spelled wrong, there may be another ion there. Um, so basically what you're doing is taking soluble ions, converting them into a solid. Uh, and then at that point you can of course weigh them. You can't weigh them directly though, you've got to wash them first. Uh, then I'll let them dry, uh, preferably in something like this, uh, and then you weigh them. So that's your two approaches, guys. Volatilization, you're blasting off the water, or precipitation, you're turning soluble ions into insoluble ones, and then washing, uh, drying, and weighing it. 
filter it first, of course. <laughs> that would be a good point if you're going to have a precipitate. do So 0 0.5, sorry, filter. So filter your precipitate. Done much chemistry? Filter your precipitate, wash it, dry it, weigh it. I'm going to follow on with a couple of examples, uh, folks, for you in terms of these calculations. This first example is actually from the 2014 revised advanced hire. It's a slightly odd question. Oh, that's not the right one. That's not the right one. That's the right one. Um, it's a slightly odd question because it seems to ask you to do the same thing twice. Um, but it's still based upon um, gravimetric analysis. So let's have a look what we got. To determine the composition of an old coin containing blah, 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 a student dissolved the coin, and that was the mass of the coin, 10.04, in nitric acid. The resulting solution was then diluted with deionized water up to 1,000 mils in a standard flask. Okay, part A. 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid, not important, but we'll come back to why in a second, was added to 100 centimetres of this solution. Oop, that's the first thing that gets my spidey senses tickling, tingling there, because that's only a tenth of your total. But maybe that's not important. Let's have a look. Of this solution, uh, until precipitation of the silver one chloride was complete. I see. So basically you've got your silver ions in solution, you're adding chloride ions, just like Dave's fish tank in fact, to it, and you're precipitating silver chloride out. After filtration, the precipitate was washed and dried and found to have a mass of 0.62. So that's the mass of precipitate. There is a wee black floaty fly hovering over this page. Go away. Thank you. Um, so that's the mass of the precipitate, and they want the percentage by mass of silver in the coin. What I would do first is I would turn the precipitate into a number of moles. Silver 1 chloride, by the way. That's important because that's Ag. Cl. So that means for every one of these, there's one silver. So if we know the moles of silver chloride that we precipitated, and that's a mass, so we'll turn that into moles, you then know the moles of silver. And if you know the moles of silver, you can turn that back into a mass and then compare it to the mass of the original coin. Boom. That's your percentage mass. So let's do that. Um, so uh, zero, is that my still on camera? Yes, I am. 0 0.620. You notice there's three significant figures there. That means they want their answer to at least three significant figures. Divide that by the GFM of the compound silver chloride, which I did cheat and look up earlier. That is 107. Point, no, it's not 143.4. Let's bring in the oldest calculator in the world. Um, 0 0.62 uh, over 143. Three, did I say? Yes, I did. 0.4 gives us that number of moles. 00432357. Let's not lose any uh, decimal points, significant figures. Sorry, let's not waste any significant figures at this point. We can round at the end. Don't round halfway through. So that is the moles of silver chloride. So that's your AgCl, i.e. it's also equal to the moles of just silver, because the ratio is 1 to 1 here. If there had been a 2 here, if it was Ag2Cl, you'd need to take that number there and multiply it by 2, that would be the moles of silver. Um, so uh, that's the moles of silver. Uh, multiply by the GFM of silver, which is 107.9. And that's the mass of silver now. So there are 0 0.46651 grams of silver um, in a 100 mil sample. Ah, and I'll bet they want, yes, they want the mass on in the original coin, which was originally in a 1,000 mils. So let's just shift that up by a power of 10. Isn't that sneaky? So... That's looking more like it. 4.665 grams of silver in a 10.04 gram coin. Let's do a little percentage calculation on that. In fact, we'll just keep that number there. We won't do any rounding at all. Divide that by 10.04. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Sausage fingers there. I had to go back and do the calculation again. 4.665 divided by 10.04. Gives us that, turn it into percentage, and we have got 46.5, if you're going to take it to three significant figures, so 46.5% silver in that coin. Quick recap there, guys, what did I do? 
I took the precipitate, turned it into a number of moles. I then worked out from the formula of the precipitate how many moles of the actual chemical that we're interested in, which was the silver. I then turned that back into a mass of silver. I had to do this extra little times 10 thing because that's what advanced tires like. They're sneaky. Because we were only precipitating out 100 mils of the original 1000 mils sample. So uh, then we work out the total mass of silver, uh, turn it into percentage, and that's how it's done. Two marks. This one's an interesting one. Suggest how the student would test that no more silver ions remained in the solution. How do you know you got all the silver out as a precipitate? It's a very good question if you're going to do any sort of analysis. And the simple answer to that is you just wait until it all settles and then you put a little splash more of your chloride ions in, in this form, hydrochloric acid. If you get any more precipitate, well, you hadn't got all the silver out in the first place. I did say there was a slightly odd question because they seem to ask just exactly the same calculation again. Okay, let's do it. Keep them happy. The filtrate was treated to reduce the copper 2 ions and the coined copper 1 ions. Then the, the precipitate of the copper 1 was done by adding the thiocyanate uh, solution here. So copper 1 plus thiocyanate makes solid copper thiocyanate complex. Filter dry and weigh uh, was found to be 0 0.32. This time they want the calculation of copper in the coin. It's precisely the same thing. Let's do it anyway though. Let's do it anyway. In this case we have got 0 0.32. Three two uh, over. Let me go and calculate the GFM um, of copper thiocyanate. It's one hundred and twenty-one point six, which gives us uh, that number of moles of the precipitate. So point zero zero two six three. I'm just going to keep that on the calculator. Um, that's the moles of the copper thiocyanate precipitate, and again, it's just one copper here. So therefore, that's also the number of moles of copper. Um, I'm going to have to go and check the GFM of copper, because I can't quite remember what it is to super accurate levels. So it's 63.5, so we take that number there, multiply by 63.5, gives us that mass. That's a mass of copper, 0 0.1671. That's going to be pretty low compared to the coin. Hold on, let me check. Oh, does this also still apply to the 100 mils? Let me check, uh, uh, guys. Um, the filtrate. Oh, the filtrate that follows on from this. So that is still 100 mils compared to 1,000. So I'm going to have to take that and multiply it by 10. Which gives us 1.671 grams of copper uh, compared to the original coin. So 1.67105 over 10.04 as a percentage times 100 gives us 16.6% uh, uh, odd calculation I might try and find a volatilization one this was a precipitation um, Here's an example of volatilization, folks, so we'll run through it. Um, what have we got? This one here. A student carried out an experiment to determine the value of Y in heated, hydrated, sorry, read the words, hey, hydrated zinc ethanoate. So you get zinc uh, ethanoate ions with a dot and then a YH2O. -O. So that means that a certain number, for every one zinc ethanoate, there are a certain number of moles of water trapped in the solid crystalline lattice. Um, this is often done to establish uh, this number here. So a 5 gram sample, if the, the printer will be quiet please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 5 gram sample was heated until all the water was removed and a constant mass of 4.18 was obtained. Um, harking back to my suggestion here, they want you to name the apparatus. You don't leave it on the bench, do you put it in the, the desiccator. Uh, and they want the value of Y for 2 marks. So let's have a quick look at this. What would I do personally? I'm going to pause this video and work out the GFM of zinc ethanoate because I can't be bothered doing it in a lifetime. And we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I don't know why I'm apologising. You didn't see any delay. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to work out the moles of the dry zinc ethanoate. I'm then going to work out the moles of the water. And if we compare the ratio to each of these, we should then be able to work out how many moles of water you would have if you had one mole of zinc ethanoate. That's the basic idea. So the actual mass of the zinc ethanoate was that. 
So we're talking about 4.18 over the GFM, which is 183.4. Gives us moles of zinc ethanoate, the pure stuff, of um, 0 0.02279 moles. Then I work out the moles of water, which of course is just the difference between these two. So that's 5, take away 4.18. Should have done that in my head. That's shocking. Hey? 0.82 over 18, because that's the GFM water, gives us, um, so that's 0 0.0455, all the five, six. That moles of, that's moles of zinc ethanoate. And that's moles. I need a new pen. This pen is not doing well. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them both by 0 0.2279 because that automatically switches that into 1. It's just a wee maths dodge. Dividing number by the smallest numbers. Remember that from uh, empirical formula? Same dodge here. So divide them both by 0 0.02279. Take that. Uh, divide it point zero. 2279 gives us an answer of 2, more or less, 1.9998. So basically y equals 2. So the correct formula is zinc ethanol with dot 2 H2O. So that's a volatilization. Very quick recap on that. Again, what I did there was um, I looked at the mass of the pure dry substance. I turned that into a number of moles. I then subtracted to find the water that had been blasted off, turned that into a number of moles as well, and then I just found the ratio between them. That gives you, for every one mole of zinc ethanol, you have got two moles of water. Job's done. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening.